The Shock Doctrine, the book by our next guest, Naomi Klein. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Well, among the thousands at last night's Occupy Wall Street protests here in New York was award-winning journalist and author Naomi Klein. She's the author of the best-selling book, The Shock Doctrine, The Rise of Disaster Capitalism. She also wrote No Logo, a book that has become a cultural manifesto for critics of unfettered capitalism worldwide. Tonight, she will be speaking at the Occupy Wall Street encampment. She traveled from Canada to participate in the protest. Last month, Naomi was in Washington, D.C., where she was arrested, along with more than 1,200 other people in a two-week campaign of civil disobedience outside the White House against the proposed Keystone XL pipeline, which would carry oil from Canada's tar sands to Gulf Coast refineries. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But, Naomi, you came here to New York to occupy Wall Street. So tell us about what you found. Well, it's just been extraordinary. I just want to say, just off the top, what a great show this has been. I mean, it's and you, you guys clearly were up all night, or your producers were up all night, cutting cutting the, the, that amazing uh, collection of, of video and voices. And but what struck me most is just how hard some of in the corporate media must be working in order to 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 find inarticulate voices because there are just so many articulate voices in the, in the protest. I mean, everybody who you stop and talk to can really give a sermon about what is wrong with this economy and have all kinds of solutions. And You and know, a, a union activist came up to me yesterday at the rally in Foley Square, and he said, I mean, how do we get out our message? Yeah. Um, the media <laughs> will not talk to us. And I said, I can't believe you haven't figured it out yet. And he said, well, what? I said, go by a little red clown nose, <laughs> go up to a reporter and go, beep, 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 and they'll interview you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it, it really is a, a sick cultural ritual of it, every time there is a new generation of politicized, engaged young people who come forward, there is this ritual mocking of them, uh, the, a kind of a, a hazing. And it's just, it's such, it's such a corrupt and corrupting way to welcome a new generation into politics. And, of course, coming from in so, um, a, a media culture that has worked so hard to dumb down uh, uh, the, uh, this society. So it's just enormously ironic when they're mocking these very, very uh, well-informed well, and, and we educated— we don't have to take this from yeah. you, Naomi. Let's turn to the networks themselves, yeah. um, to former CNBC reporter Erin Burnett, uh, who covered, uh, uh, some would say, mocked the movement and uh, the news segment on her first day of her news CNN sh show on Monday night. Um, the show is called Out Front. In this segment, it was titled Seriously. This is a clip. Now for a story that made us say, seriously? The Occupy Wall Street protest entered its third week today. What started as less than a dozen college students camping out in a park near the New York Stock Exchange is now hundreds of protesters, and it's spread to other cities. But what are they protesting? Nobody seems to know. So this afternoon, we went to Wall Street to find out. And despite what you heard, here's what I saw. It's not just a bunch of dancing hippies protesting. This is unemployed software developer Dan. What do you do for a living? Uh, I'm a software developer. Software developer. Yes. So currently employed or unemployed? Unemployed. Unemployed. Unemployed, we like to call it. Unemployed. It's called Occupy Wall Street. So do you know that um, taxpayers actually made money on the Wall Street bailout? Uh, I was not aware of that. They did. They made not on GM, but they did on the okay. on the Wall Street part of the bailout. Okay. Does that make you feel any differently? Well, I would have to do more research about it, but um, if I were right, it might. Oh sure. Seriously? That's all it would take to put an end to the unrest. Well, as promised, we did go double check the numbers on the bank bailout, and this is what we found. Yes, the bank bailouts made money for American taxpayers right now to the tune of $10 billion, anticipated that it will be $20 billion. Those are seriously the numbers. That is the new CNN host, Erin Burnett, after going down to Occupy Wall Street in Kamen, her first night of her new show out front, Naomi Klein. Well, I think that tells us a lot about what we can expect from that show. Um, and it, it, it's her sarcasm and snideness are so striking because, of course, she is one of dozens of mainstream financial reporters that cheerleaded, you know, cheerled the, the, the housing bubble and every bubble before it, completely missed every sign coming that the economy was about to crash. Um, so I don't think she's in much of a position to be so snide. But of course, you know, that I don't think that that's that that, that is why people are protesting, because they think that they lost money on the bailout. 
it's the very nature of the bailout. It's the very nature of just of, of, of the banks being able to get all, billions of dollars, hundreds of billions of dollars from taxpayers with absolutely no strings attached, um, and and that homeowners were sacrificed. Um, that 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 now, the several that million workers, people who've lost their homes would def definitely cheer was, the exactly. profit that was made on the bailout. It right? was the decision to bail out the banks with no strings attached and not to bail out workers and not to bail out homeowners. And now to pass the the the, the bill for the crisis that was created on Main Street uh, and the crashing of the global economy to the public sphere and now having the, the cost of that crisis passed down at the federal level, at the municipal level, and taking the forms of all the cutbacks um, that all those the, the union spokespeople were talking about, the health care workers, the education workers, these are pay, these are the people who are paying the costs for their crisis. And, you know, the, the, the slogan, we, we won't pay for your crisis, started in Italy two years ago, and it spread to Greece, and it spread to France, and it's really been globalized. And that, to, that to me, is really that, and we are the 99 percent is really what's bringing people to the streets. It's, it's, it's inequality, but more than the inequality, the injustice of the most vulnerable people having to pay the costs of the crisis for the rich. Uh, and, of course, she completely misunderstood the, the, the source of that rage, misrepresented it. Well, earlier this week, CNBC spoke with William Gross, the co-founder of PIMCO, one of the largest global investment firms, with $1.3 trillion under management. Gross manages the world's largest mutual fund, with almost a quarter of a trillion dollars invested. Let's go to that clip. As you warn about how labor is not participating in wealth creation, and that is a macro global threat. Yeah, I, I think so. That's certainly the most immediate problem, globalization. Um, yeah, you know, uh, policymakers may be killing their golden goose, in this case, the American worker, um, whose uh, household income at uh, 49000 bucks, Brian, is, is the lowest in more than a decade. And to the extent that jobs go to China and overseas, as opposed to stay in the United States, then that affects obviously employment, if it affects levels for unemployment, and it affects economic growth going forward. Without the consumer, without the wage earner, um, you have very little in terms of the potential for consumer growth and for economic growth going forward. You know, and as Carmen Reinhart and Ken Rogoff pointed out in their book, this time is different. They note how that over history, financial crises become banking crises, become political crises. We're seeing the riots of the protests in Greece. We're seeing Occupy Wall Street here. Is this is this going to turn into more of a political crisis whereby the people sort of march up, rise up, if you will, and these austerity programs are forced to go on the back burner, thus disenabling a country like Greece to pay its bills? I don't think we're going that far in the United States. To some extent, the uh, the movement, so to speak, that we see in Greece in terms of the strikes and the, the protests, you know, simply haven't gravitated over here, and I don't suspect they will. Uh, you know, we're, we're always fascinated by the uh, the debates and by the, the policy differences, so to speak, but to a considerable extent, the policies are much the same uh, in terms of favoring capital as opposed to labor. And until uh, we begin to have that sense in, in terms of uh, the Main Street public, that it's labor that needs to be favored in terms of policies, then I, I don't think we're going to see much of a, uh, of a protest, per se. That was William Gross, the co-founder of PIMCO, one of the largest global investment firms, with $1.3 trillion under management, speaking on CNBC. Naomi Klein. Well, it's a really interesting analysis, and I think there's a lot of truth in it. This is, you know, one of the contradictions of capitalism is that um, it is so destructive that it that it des uh, destroys its own base. You know, whether that's the, its base of consumers able to buy its products, which is why you have to feed them all kinds of cheap credit, which then becomes a bubble that pops um, and destroys the economy, you know, or it's whether it's the destruction of the ecosphere. I mean, whether it is the destruction of the natural systems on which uh, on which we depend, and and and. This this is why I think we need to see the the economic and the ecological crisis is absolutely intertwined, if not the same crisis that has their roots, that, that have their roots in, in unfettered greed and an inability to say enough and an inability to understand that there are limits, that, that, that there is such a thing as scarcity in the natural world and this is one of the things that's that's there is there is such a thing as 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 a limit in what our atmosphere can absorb uh, in, in terms of the pollution that we put out and our understanding of limits is so twisted because we don't understand those limits we don't understand real uh, the, the real limits imposed on us by physics and chemistry 
But we impose these absolutely false limits in, uh, uh, when it comes to economics. And this is one of the themes that really struck me talking to demonstrators yesterday at, at the Occupy Wall Street demonstrations, was the theme of false scarcity, that, that, we, that we are living in this age where everybody is told there's not enough. There's not enough money for people to have decent health care. There's not enough money for people to have decent housing. Um, there's not enough space in the country for immigrants, um, because there's not enough. And it, we're, we're told this all the time when we live with this. And that's what's so powerful and so symbolic about the decision to go to Wall Street, to go to this space of abundance and expose the lie of, of, of scarcity. But at the same time as we expose that lie of, scare, of, of scarcity and show yet, no, that actually this is an abundant society, we have a crisis of distribution in the society, we also have to recognize where there are real limits, in the limits of our natural systems to absorb the, tre the tremendous stresses that we're putting on them. And climate change is only one part of those stresses. And, well, Naomi, speaking of not enough, there's the argument also that the country doesn't have enough energy. And what you, what you were arrested in the yeah. protest mm -hmm. against the Excel pipeline. Uh, unfortunately, some of the construction unions are uh, lobbying and for that now because they see it as jobs, as part of the solution to unemployment. Labor Day parades, <laughs> right? Arm in arm with the Trans Canada, the the company that is that is uh, pushing the pipeline. I think a, a low point in labor history. And in terms of the Excel pipeline, but some and great unions are supporting the, the protest. Yes.